Let's try the mechanism for this reaction. Draw the mechanism and predict the product for this reaction. Don't forget to put in your electron pushing arrows for the mechanism. Oh, we're going mechanism. I think one of you might have gotten the wrong charge over here. Notice that since the nitrogen is neutral, after it loses electrons, it should have a positive charge, at least in this intermediate step. Now, oftentimes, when we have a positive charge, we want to do another step. So what could happen now? Br minus H. Right. Now we could have the Br. this. Uh, in many ways, I think this is the best way to write this, but I I've seen a lot of variations on this. Sometimes at this point in the course, people kind of leave these as the final products, and sometimes people would just write them like this. They might say... But you're missing a C there, right? I'm way off, aren't I? So let's try again. Yeah, C. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Get that right now. Okay. That's right. Uh, what I was going to say is that, although I think this is probably the most useful way to write it, sometimes you'll see people actually leave the amine in the charged form now, and they might write this as a ammonium bromide. So they might write it like this. Sometimes people just kind of write the final product like this. So, uh, although in some ways this seems better to me, this is another way people might write this. Also, sometimes I've seen, instead of using the bromide to take the proton, sometimes people use another ammonium to take the proton, oftentimes. So there's a bunch of different ways you can write this. But this is one good way. What's the name of this mechanism? SN2. Yeah, we were just talking about how a neutral nitrogen can do an SN2 reaction, because it's a pretty good nucleophile. Um, of course, this is a good electrophile here. This is uh, very unhindered, so this would be a good SN2 reaction. This wouldn't work very well with a tertiary. Maybe even a secondary would be pretty slow. But uh, for a methyl or a primary, this works just fine. Remember that whenever we learn a new functional group, the first thing we learn is how to synthesize it, how to make it. Well, what we just learned is one way to make amines, right? What we just learned is how to make a primary amine. We've seen how to start with ammonia and make a primary amine. So all the way back last term when you were learning about SN2, um, you might not have realized it, but you were learning how to make amines. This is a, uh, a logical way to make an amine. You can just use ammonia to attack something. Ammonia that attacks something would give us at least here a primary amine. And it seems like theoretically if we had started with the primary amine, we could have made a secondary amine. Or maybe if we started with the secondary amine, we could have made a tertiary. But, but it turns out that this reaction is not a very good synthesis. There's a flaw to this synthesis. So we need to know what the flaw is and then find a replacement. Um, this molecule is a better nucleophile than this molecule. What is it that makes this the better nucleophile? Why is this nitrogen a better nucleophile now than when it started? Because it has more resonance. And so it has like a, it could have like a... If we actually draw this out, we won't be able to find any other resonance forms. Can like don't, it like, won't the electrons like... There's no pi bonds here. You usually need some pi bonds to get some resonance. It can't do this because that would break the octet rule. Oh, it can't do this because that would break the octet rule. If this was an amide nitrogen, then this would be a carbonyl, and then there would be resonance because you could kick off the pi bond. That's, actually, that's the main reason why amides are not given the same name as amines, because amides have resonance and amines don't. Um, so amides have resonance because they have an extra pi bond, but amines don't. So no resonance. 
Now, a good nucleophile is somebody who wants to donate electrons more. Well, the big difference here is that we've added an extra carbon chain. Now, are carbon chains electron donating or electron withdrawing? Donating. Donating. That was a big theme of last term, but that was the explanation for my question right there. This is a better nucleophile than ammonia because the extra carbon chain makes the whole molecule more electron donating. Uh, by the way, when you get to benzene very shortly, that'll be very important again. Alkyl groups, carbon chains, are electron donating. We need to have memorized that carbon chains are electron donating. At least they're more electron donating than hydrogens. You could roughly say that's because they just have way more electrons. These hydrogens really don't have many electrons to donate. But this methyl group has a whole big electron, uh, electron cloud. So alkyl groups are slightly electron donating. That was the whole reason why back in last term, tertiary carbocations were the most stable because they're stabilized by the electron donating carbon chains. Well, now this carbon chain is making this a better nucleophile. Again, I was mentioning that you might see problems where you have to rank things in order of nucleophilicity. Well, here's another way to rank things in order of nucleophilicity in terms of the carbon chains. Remember, another name for a carbon chain is just an alkyl group. By the way, we could have called this reaction an alkylation. This is an alkylation because we're adding a carbon chain. Now, why, does th why is it bad that this is a better nucleophile? Well, because this is not going to stop. Now, this is going to go through and do another SN2 and get another alkyl group. So this one would go into overalkylation? Overalkylation. Maybe you've heard that term. The problem here is overalkylation. Okay. But isn't that only if it's base catalyzed? Or does that count as base catalyzed because it's already like kind of a base? Let's talk about that. Actually, this reaction doesn't need a catalyst. This is just SN2, right? SN2 doesn't need a catalyst. Yeah, but you know like in general with alkylations, if it's base catalyzed, it'll over alkylate, oh. and if it's acid catalyzed, it'll only alkylate once. Yeah, that's a, that sounds like a, uh, is that right? So under basic, uh, a base catalyzed conditions. Yeah. So, um, that was for when you have a carbonyl and you're adding Br2. Yeah, that's uh, right. That's, so I think you're thinking about something important, but it's a, it's, a, it's a different issue. Okay. Yeah. Again, in this case, we don't really have any catalysts. SN, this SN2 reaction doesn't need any catalyst. We can just use these reagents. So if you do that, it'll keep alkylating until you have NCH33? That's right. Or uh, in fact, oh. it'll probably go all the way to the um, this is a quaternary ammonium salt. A quaternary ammonium salt. Quaternary because the nitrogen has four carbon chains. It's ammonium because it has a charge. And salt is basically just a synonym for an ionic, uh, ionic, ionic compound. So um, yeah, so this is uh, every, sing every time we add an alkyl group, it makes it even more anxious to get the next alkyl group. So it's not going to stop until, it, obviously, it can't get any more alkyl groups here because that would break the octet rule. So this is probably what, what we're going to get. But in most cases, this is probably not what we want. In most cases, we probably just wanted to add one alkyl group. So uh, uh, what I, we're trying to say is, this is not nearly as good a way of doing alkylations as you might think. Um, because it's, you can't really get it to start to stop with just the one alkylation. And also, as an SN, isn't it only going to want to do it to like primary? Not necessarily like secondary and tertiary. Yeah, and another problem here is that um, it only works for methyls and primaries as well. Um, it might work for secondaries. I, I don't know about that, but it certainly wouldn't work for tertiaries. So the likelihood is that we're going to get a kind of a mixture here. We're going to get a mixture of um, amines with different amounts of alkylation. Maybe one of the most ma major products will be the quaternary. There might be some other things too. But anyway, we're not going to get a clean yield of the monoalkylated amine, which is probably what we wanted here. So that's our, our big drawback here. So, uh, so much for just doing a normal SN2 to make it happen. What is this like called? Like uh, am Amine alkylation? I don't know if it really has a formal name, but we're, we're alkylating and we're either alkylating ammonia or we're alkylating an amine. Alkylation. Consider the alkylation of ammonia with bromomethane. That's what we just went through. So uh, we have to go back to the drawing board and see if we can find a better way. <laughs> 